We enchant something and our experience goes down as expected. This is intended behavior. Switch to creative mode, same experience level. I go to enchant something. My experience went down, but I still have the same amount of lapis. Pretty soon, this bug will have been in the game for almost 13 years. Enchantment menu has the logic behind what we just saw. If we scroll down to click menu button, you see the different checks for experience levels and has infinite materials. And we see a call to on enchantment performed from the player. If we look at that method, this is how experience is actually removed from the player. We already have a method on the player to check if they have infinite materials, which essentially is just seeing are they in creative mode with this insta build check. We're just going to reuse that with an injection at the very head of this method so that our logic here is canceling this from happening. We go into creative mode and enchant something and go back to survival and our experience hasn't changed. Why is it that when I ignite TNT, it just falls right into the fence? Another one that's almost 13 years old, and we actually have a suggested fix down here. When the TNT block is actually primed, it creates a new primed TNT entity at the exact same Y level. When the primed TNT entity is constructed, we see a set delta movement call here, which sets the initial velocity of the entity. So I rounded up a little bit, but basically what we're gonna do is replace this 0 0.2 with 0 0.23. Same setup again, light the TNT, and now it's properly on top of the hitbox. So it might look strange. I'm not sure if there might be another preferred way to fix this. Pro gamer, pro gamer. Okay, this is our control. We died when waking up. I'm sure you see the pattern here now. Almost 13 years old. You can reproduce this bug, read all the steps about it. When any living entity starts sleeping, we're already setting the delta movement to be zero. We're just gonna insert a call to reset fall distance after that. I'm also gonna set on ground to falls because this technically isn't being reset either. Try this clutch again. We're in bed, we get out of bed, and we're fine. Before I even look at the code, I almost want to assume that this is actually intentional. This makes sense for boats and anything that actually inherits from vehicle entity. All of these might have a similar behavior. Here we can see a similar chain of logic from painting to hanging entity into block attached entity. You see that when a player is interacting, it may hurt or simulate a damage source of the player attacking that entity. Painting, if you didn't know, is actually its own entity. Probably the worst way to do this. We're injecting our own logic to ignore the first hit from a projectile from a creative player. Um, so we're targeting hurt server. At the top of that, we're gonna inject our own logic to check if the player is in creative and if they're throwing a projectile. And if we haven't hit this vehicle entity with a creative projectile twice, then we just ignore it. We spawn in a boat, we can throw some snowballs at it. We just throw a couple and then switch to survival, punch it, go back to creative. It resets the count. I'm not sure if this might be what Mojang would prefer. This is just my quick and dirty hack. If we jump like normal, there's no particles coming out. But if we fall from a significant height, even in creative mode, these particles get generated. You can see something similar with chickens. From a small height, no particles. But from a significant height, even though they sl even though they fall slowly, we still see those particles appear. Issue 30391, also about 13 years old at this point. For all living entities, this happens in check fall damage, and we see the send particles actually happening here. There's no check against slow falling, or if it's a creative mode player, or if they're invulnerable to fall damage. There's no checks at all against that. We have an entity type tag of fall damage immune. So if we go to check fall damage, what I'm doing is just at the beginning of this, if the entity has slow falling, or they have the fall damage immune tag, or it's a player that is in creative mode, we're just going to ignore all the rest of this logic. We're going to fall again, no particles emitted, and no particles emitted. We totally get keeping this for the sake of immersion. We should probably ignore it if they're immune to fall damage. Throwing an item into lava, we hear a burning sound, but not in fire. Items are entities as well, and they are hurt on the server on the logical side. And when they're hurt and ready to be destroyed, they are simply discarded. There's no, there's no sound that's played. Here I'm injecting my own logic. After this discard call, we're checking is we're checking is the damage source fire, and then we're gonna play the sound of a generic burn just like lava does. So let's try it. Lava. We hear the sound, and we hear it in fire as well. This might just be an oversight. If you're listening, you can hear the minecart in the background. If I turn down friendly mobs, you don't hear it anymore. But this one doesn't suggest a fix directly, um, just that it should use a different sound slider. I might go for ambient or environment for this. That's a personal design choice though. So this is a pretty classic bug. We have a door, we stand where it's gonna close into, and then we start jumping, and now we're inside of the frame, and we can get on top of the door. Over time, this pig should actually be pushed up. We can see the logic behind snow accumulating, and where block.push entities up is being called, and the logic behind that. You can see how it's pushing the entities up before it's actually updating that block state. Here's my quick and dirty solution. Whenever we're interacting with the door at the head of this method, I'm just checking. 
I'm basically just pushing entities out of the way if it, if they were going to collide with the door. To check this out, if I stand where it would be, I get like knocked out of the way basically. So not not a great solution at all. I doubt Mojang would ever do it like this. Um, but honestly, I, I was kind of struggling to find a great way to go about doing this. Hope you noticed I was using dark mode now. I really want to give a sincere thank you to everybody like who really appreciates this kind of content looking behind the code and actually inspecting like why these things are actually happening. Thank you guys so much for all the comments, for the feedback, for giving me different ways to improve my content, for suggesting new things. If you have any more ideas, please suggest them in the comment. If you really want to support and see more of this content, please make sure to subscribe and like this video. I've also seen quite a few comments mentioning like an unofficial patch, and I didn't have any plans to do that before. Um, before starting this series. I'm kind of thinking about it, I guess, in a sense. I only want to do bugs that people don't consider features. Like, you feel me? Like, in the last video, a lot of people were saying the sugarcane thing. This is intended behavior, basically, at this point. Like, it's hard-coded into the game. I really love any feedback for that. There are also quite a few people asking, like, if I worked at Mojang, or uh, if I was going to work at Mojang, or saying that Mojang should hire me. And I just want to be clear that I'm a I'm an extremely junior developer. I've only worked with Java for two years, and my only experience is with Minecraft. That doesn't make me any, that doesn't make me specially qualified or any more qualified than anybody that actually has real experience to work with Mojang, I guess. If they reached out, of course, I would say yes, instantly. I'm not exactly, you know, like the first person they would go to anyway. This is the real outro. If you're interested in seeing other kinds of content from me, make sure to join the Discord. There's a link in the description. Um, I do play a lot of Minecraft myself. So sometimes I might record gameplay or do some, you know, other kinds of videos. If you need modding tutorials or you need a tutorial or you need a tutorial on like a specific subject or something, just leave a comment letting me know. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you so much and see you in the next one.